Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina wa Mawlana. Muhammadin wa alihi wa zhajihi wa zhuriyyatihi wa jamaheen. This is uh, an important but short uh, article on democracy and its nature. Uh, written by one of my teachers. Um, it's still in a draft form, so there there might be some typos, etc. Uh, we'll be reading it. We'll try not to spend too much time on it because, on discussion, I mean, um, because we are going to look at, uh, going to be talking about these topics again and again. <laughs> <clears throat> so, truth about democracy. Today, most, uh, almost all governance regimes, whether they are liberal, socialist, nationalist, claim to be democrat democratic. So democratic is something universally praiseworthy term. So, be democratic is generally considered to be a good thing and anti-democratic means there's something bad or something wrong with you. The only major exception is Islamic matters of Afghanistan, Alimar al Islam. Okay, so democ democracy is usually defined as the rule of the people by the people for the people. This is a dangerous half-truth. Now, it is a half-truth. That will be obvious. I'm not sure why it's dangerous. Uh, yeah, I mean, of course, all half truths are dangerous because they take us away from the full truth. But um, because if you, the easy way to divert people from truth is half truth, not falsehood, because falsehood is uh, normally easily detectable, relatively speaking. So probably in that sense it's dangerous. Um, and why is a half-truth? Democracy has never been the rule by the people. So when we talk about democracy, we're talking about a lot of things. So, so when we're talking about democracy, and this is not an exhaustive list, uh, so the, just for illustration. We're talking about a lot of things. <clears throat> um, the, um, we might be talking about justification of democracy. Democracy. We're talking about tools of democracy, like election. Might be talking about the process. process through government is elected. Might be talking about uh, institutions. But Parliament is one of the important democratic institutions. <clears throat> and we might be talking about actual governance. So actual government. And their policies and things like that. So there are a lot of things. So when we say uh, democracy is uh, ruled by the people, that's how democracy is justified or legitimated. So, but that doesn't mean that the uh, rule of the people is the way democracy actually governs, etc. But it's the name of the pe It's in the name of the people that the whole system is justified, uh, and in the process of the appeal to people and their desires is made, etc. <laughs> uh, democracy is never be and can never be the rule by the people. The people Avam in Urdu have always been ruled by elites. Khawas. So, it's not the people who um, 
rule in every system the elite rules the only thing is uh, this is a democratic elite in that it elite justifies itself by appeal to the concept of the people and also to the actual people uh, for election for example but the people don't actually rule the elites rule the people are the uh, necessarily those who are governed the people are always governed in every system people don't rule the government and the government can never be the same entity the government and the governors can never be one and the same entity unless you are talking about your own self-governance like on your own body or for example even that is very complex similarly a democratic regime can never be a rule of the people the people as a whole cannot rule. It's just um, even logistically impossible, as we know. It can, however, in some circumstances, in some circumstances, be the rule for the people. Uh, for example, for the well-being of the people. And that's why people elect those people, because they think that they are working for them. That's possible. And depending on who the people are. And that's a very important thing. Now, the people is an abstract term. And this people is always actual people is different from the people because this is an abstract term and the gap between the people and the actual people is always contingent historical circumstantial sometimes this gap is huge sometimes it's uh, less, sometimes more, but there's always the gap. And the justification is generally uh, with reference to the people, these abstract people. Legitimation is to this abstract people. Although in the actual electoral process, you do appeal to actual people, the voter. But when you have to make uh, actually choices which are against the desires of the actual people, then you pick this ideal people against these actual people. So, for example, during the Iraq war, for example, Tony Blair and Bush said that the leader is the one who doesn't follow the people, lead the people. <laughs> uh, that's, that's what they meant at the time. And those times you, you know who are the real, real rulers as well. So it can, I will be in certain, certain circumstances, be rule of the people, depending on who the people are. Similarly, democracy can be a rule of the people, if by of we mean over the people. So in democracy, what happens yeah, is, yeah. similarly, we can, um, democracy can be a rule of people if by off we mean over the people. So, so we can tentatively say that um, democracy is a rule of an elite which rules over over the people uh, 
but justifies its rule over the people with reference to to the people something like that for now anyway okay so <clears throat> therefore 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 the correct the correct definition of democracy is ruled by an elite over people which may in some circumstances be for the people like for the benefit of people or oh. okay Okay, the next section, the um, historical evolution of democracy. The crucial term in our revised def definition of democracy is the people. Uh, democracy originated in ancient Athens where the people was meant the citizen of the state. The citizens were a small minority of the state's population which consisted mainly of slaves and aliens who had no role in the governance system. And also, actually, democracy before democracy in um, ancient um, Greece, the system was aristocratic system. And democracy itself was a way for some aristocrats to overthrow other aristocrats and with the help of a citizen become new rulers actually. So that's important as well. Uh, democracy disappeared uh, at the model of governance after the collapse of the Roman Republic in roughly the first century of the Christian era and reappeared about 12, 1300 years later uh, in some Italian cities and later in the market towns of what is now the Netherlands, Netherlands and Germany. In these cities, the people who ruled over the merchants, bankers and craftsmen and guilds, uh, guild parts of participants Again, a tiny minority among the state's population. In these people, in these cities, the people who ruled ruled were the merchants, bankers, craftsmen, and guild participants. Again, a tiny minority. So basically, people with money. They were allowed a vote, and they were the one who ruled. Again, so important thing is this: the people is always a tiny minority. So far, anyway, after the revolutions against absolute monarchies, uh, monarch, uh, absolute monarchies, uh, Protestant uh, mon monarchies, uh, England, France, America, and democratic regimes were established in several countries. Up to the beginning of the 20th century, these also represented minority rule of the people who had the franchise were capitalist property owners, landlords, merchants, industrialists, and financiers. Only these people had. So that's why they are called propertyed, propertyed democracy. And even today in, um, in many countries, uh, the local governments are based on this rule. I mean, partially based on this rule, anyway. Okay. <clears throat> In America, the establishment of democratic rule required uh, the genocide of the vast majority of the continent's population, the Indians. I don't know what's the actual number, um, but it's a lot of number, a lot of people were methodically slaughtered and depossessed, dispossessed during the three centuries. Adults, white males were a tiny minority and they were the people. 
in 17th 18th century america they were the only citizens of the country and so they they were the had the right to vote adult franchise was introduced in all capitalist countries europe america the ussr and china and in most colonies during the 20th century so the the orbit of um, the people suddenly increased in the 20th century as representative government came to mean representation of the entire population of the state for the first time in history so the people uh, in democratic regimes in most of the history were very tiny number of people a minority and only in 20th century that this uh, the people actually included at least in theory the entire population of the state okay okay so the next is uh, democracy as a tool of capitalist governance okay i think we'll stop here and next session we'll start from here inshallah